one of the big problems that we have culturally, and I don't, this, I think this is shifting, um, but there's this hyper focus in filling the belly. And um, people will force this, force themselves to fill their abdomen. And when that happens, when you do something forcefully, what sometimes ends up happening is that the rib cage will respond by flattening or sinking in, okay? So you're creating compression around the lungs and around the heart. Now, there is a reason why you might want to do that. Let's say you're yelling and you exhale and you push your belly out or you're lifting something heavy. Then it makes a lot of sense to allow that slide to happen and the belly, the lower belly to open. But if, if you're forcing an abdominal, a belly breath, as they say, a lot of people will say, well, that's how babies breathe. Well, no, babies breathe everywhere, everywhere. You look at their back and their shoulder and their belly and their bum and they breathe everywhere. And, and so that's how we're supposed to breathe when we're at rest. Right, when we're at rest, we breathe everywhere, front, back, sides. Feldenkrais often talked about, you know, he would say, imagine a six-sided box in your torso and that all those sides can move simultaneously, or you can choose to move them differently. You can choose for the sides of the box to go this way. And so then that would mean that the abdomen wouldn't fill as much. And again, it depends on what you're doing, right? So maybe someone who's, uh, um, who is a ballet dancer, who's not supposed to be moving her belly too much, and fixing her pelvis will likely widen her breath into her back and lift her chest. Now that's useful when you're dancing, but it's not so great if you're doing it all the time. And this yeah, is where yeah. the habit and compulsion falls into place. Usually I, I, would, I would say I would make a distinction between a compulsive way of breathing and habitual way. Com sometimes compulsion is a, a first comes as a, as a thought of I should, like it's a cognitive process. And so when you offer more information to that person and say, well, actually um, that isn't the only way to breathe and you show them another way, they can adopt it if it, once they feel it mm -hmm. and it feels good. Habits are under the radar. So often people who have habits, they don't feel it. And it just happens automatically. Okay, so the right way to breathe is the most efficient way, depending on what you're doing. Okay, so if I, if I bend over to tie my shoes, I am not going to try hard to breathe into my chest and my belly. That would be ridiculous. That would make it hard for me to reach my feet. I would probably breathe into the lung tissue into my back and expand my ribs in the back. But I wouldn't want to do that all the time. So here's, here's, there's a, there is, um, there are some lessons where he gets us to quiet. So when we're, our, when we're doing simple, when we're quiet, so when we're sitting or we're, we're doing things that are non strenuous, we can breathe in a way that is the most, is very efficient so that it doesn't overwork the intercostals, the muscles and the ribs. It doesn't overwork the diaphragm or the abdominals or like the neck muscles. Mm -hmm.